You know, the very first strategy and the only strategy really that God uses to change the world is a blessing strategy. Uh, God explained it this way to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, the very first book of the Bible. And he said this to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So God's strategy for reaching the world and restoring the world was simply this, to have his people bless the world. We're not blessed simply to be blessed. We're blessed to be a blessing. And so we developed a, a blessing strategy. And the challenge is this, okay? Put this blessing strategy into play every single day of your life. All right, put it into play every single day and then discuss this blessing strategy every week in your small group. So put it into play every day, discuss it every week in your group. And guess what? This strategy spells the word bless, B-L-E-S-S, -S, all right? And it begins with prayer. Yeah, the B is for begin, begin with prayer. You see, prayer is both how you discover your mission and also how you do mission. You know, for some of you, uh, I bet maybe you're a little frustrated because you don't always feel like you know your mission or your purpose in life. And you look at people who are so absolutely certain about their mission, they, they move their families across the country or even the world to pursue that mission. And they sort of make you angry. I mean, you know, like good for them, but hey, what about me? Well, see, this is the first step in discovering your mission. You begin with prayer. You see, God is at work all the time, all around us. And there's a whole world he wants to bless. It's really a dark and unhopeless world that, that desperately needs hope and his light. But if you're not sure where to start, well, pray. Begin with prayer. I mean, you can pray while, you know, reading the newspaper in the morning, looking for places where you could bring light to the darkness. Uh, pray on your way to work. You know, uh, while you're on the train or maybe in your car or walking, you know, just pray and ask God, God, where can I be a blessing? Or pray while you're walking through your neighborhood. You see, prayer is how you begin to discover your mission. But you know, it's also the first step in how to do your mission. Uh, if you know the person uh, you want to reach, pray for that person. If you know the place you want to restore, pray for that neighborhood, pray for that community, that city. Uh, Lisa, my wife, and I, we've been praying for some families in our community where we live. And uh, the other night we were talking and we suddenly realized that there are seven families on our list. And if you look at their last names, it turns out they begin with the first seven letters of the alphabet. Kind of quirky, kind of weird, kind of strange, but we had A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And I love it. And it makes it a lot easier for me to remember who I'm praying for. I just go through the first seven letters of the alphabet. But begin with prayer. And after you're praying it and God has given you a person or a place, then you're ready for another practice. B is begin with prayer. The second practice is listen. The L is for listen. And you know, sadly, Christians have become more known for talking than listening. But before we can ever reach a person or restore a community, we've got to have a relationship with them and, and get to know them. And I really believe that relationship starts with listening. Uh, you know, I spend quite a bit of time in Starbucks and other cafes around the city. And often I'm by myself, but I use that time to listen to the conversations around me. You know, what people are talking about, what they're concerned about, what they're excited about, what they're working through, where they're being challenged. And you know what? I'm learning a lot just listening. And when we listen like that, not only are people speaking to us, I believe God will speak to us too. So you can pray for a person or a place and you can intentionally listen to that person or group of persons, that place. Then your next step toward blessing might just be to eat. B, begin with prayer, listen, then eat. Sounds pretty good to me, doesn't it to you? Uh, a few months back, uh, Lisa, my wife and I, we invited a family over for dinner. And you know, before that night, our schedule got really, really crazy and we were so close to changing our plans and just asking them to join us at a restaurant. Now that would have been fine and actually even good. But you know, in retrospect, I'm really glad we had them in our home. And we had a great evening at our place and, and the wife, the mom from this family, I don't know how many times she told us how special it was to have dinner in our home rather than a restaurant. I mean, eating is something we are all experts in, right? I'm almost of the opinion that eating is a spiritual gift. <laughs> Do you have that one? But there's something about eating together that I think moves any relationship past acquaintance and towards friendship. And it's a great way to bless someone. So when it comes to being on mission and blessing those around you, begin with prayer, that's the B, listen, 
and eat. And then you'll discover how they want to be loved or how you can serve them. Yeah, the first S is for serve. And here's the key. They'll let you know. If you really listen, get to know people and their place or their community, they will begin to tell you how you can serve them. And when you get to serve someone, I mean, that is a blessing that will change their world. You know, sometimes I think we're a little too quick to jump to serving before we've really listened. And listening helps us discover how we can best come alongside someone and serve that person or those people. And see, I think the listening before the serving ensures that the serving is really about the person being served and not the person doing the serving. All right? So begin with prayer. That's the B. Listen, eat, serve. We've got one more S to finish our blessed strategy, and that's story. See, chances are you will have earned the right to tell your story by the time you've began with prayer, you've listened, you've maybe had a chance to eat together, and you've served. As a matter of fact, they might just ask you to tell your story of how you found your way back to God in Jesus. You see, it's important that we're ready to tell our story. And the best way I can think of to tell my story is to simply tell people the difference knowing Jesus has made in my life. You know, just after we moved to the city a little over a year ago, I discovered that a friend of mine from high school lives just a few blocks away. And I've been praying for him and his family. Uh, we've spent time together, our families, where I've been trying to just kind of listen to him, listen to his story. We've had them over for dinner, and, and through the listening, I've discovered that the best way to serve him is to listen to him and just give him a chance to bounce ideas and thoughts off of me. And you know what? I fully expect that sometime in the near future, I will get to tell him my story, the difference that Jesus has made in my life. And my prayer is that by being a blessing, he will find his way back to God and Jesus. See, this is how we will all accomplish the mission of Jesus. This is how we will bless the world. Begin with prayer. Listen, eat, serve, and share your story. The story of Jesus at work in your life. Got it? Now, go be a blessing.